The Rams wide receiver room just got a little more crowded. Who's coming in and who's coming out? You are Locked On Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Rams your first listen every day, your team every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Travis Rogers. I host the Rams pregame show and postgame show on their flagship station right here in Los Angeles, 710 ESPN. I've been doing it since the Rams came back to LA back in 2016. And of course, got to enjoy that wonderful, wonderful Super Bowl 56 championship just a couple of months ago. Thanks for making us a part of your routine. Make sure you subscribe to Locked on Rams, both on your podcast feed, the little plus button, the little check, whichever uh, platform you're using it on. And of course, Locked on Rams on YouTube. So here's what I want to get into today. I want to talk about some of the guys that may be down the road, who maybe some of these acquisitions is very bad news for. That's coming up later on on Locked on Rams. Plus, I want to talk about something that I think doesn't get mentioned a whole lot as to why so many of these players are wanting to be here in Los Angeles with this version of the LA Rams. But let's start with the big news of the day. The Rams go and get the big name wide receiver. The Rams make their offense even better along the way, but it isn't exactly the name that I think a lot of people thought would be coming in. And that, of course, is former Jacksonville Jag, former Chicago Bear, Allen Robinson. The Rams signed him to a three-year deal worth $45 million, but as always, the money that you need to pay attention to the most is the guaranteed money, $30 million reportedly guaranteed to Allen Robinson when he comes to L.A. So let's start with the good news. Allen Robinson is a very, very good player. Allen Robinson makes the Rams a better football team. With the addition of him, they're better than they were before he got here. He is a guy that was very good in Jacksonville, very good in Chicago. And, and here's, here's part of why I think this is very exciting for him and very exciting for what he might be able to do with the Rams coming up here in the next few seasons. What are his quarterbacks? Who have they been? Who have they? What have, what have they accomplished? Where have they been in their career arcs uh, when it comes to success, when it comes to winning, when it comes to putting up bananas numbers? And the answer is they're not, right? Now, all of a sudden, imagine taking a talent like Allen Robinson and putting him with a talent like Matthew Stafford, okay? Now what? Think Odell Beckham, okay? Think what Odell was when he played in New York, Think what he was then when he went to Cleveland, and Cleveland all of a sudden has a quarterback in Baker Mayfield who does not seem to jive real well with OBJ. The coach does not seem to, to jive real well with him. They're shopping the quarterback because they've come to the conclusion that that's not going to work for them. So all of a sudden, the quarterback makes a big deal when it comes to these wide receivers. Duh, right? As, as my friend, former Lakers champion Michael Thompson says, duh, right? It's pretty easy. So Allen Robinson, high-level wide receiver, throw in Matthew Stafford, high-level quarterback, what do you get? You get a pretty damn good combination is what you get along the way. So that is very good news for him. That is very good news for his stats. That's very good news for Matthew Stafford. It's another target to throw to. Really good stuff along the way. So here's the other part. The very first thing you thought of when you saw that this come through, you, I mean, I don't. you may have thought the same thing I did, which was, what does this mean for Odell Beckham Jr.? Does this mean that he's less likely to come back? Does this mean that that doesn't change at all? What does it mean for the future of that wide receiver room? Well, it certainly complicates it. And I don't know if Odell is the odd man out. Um, let's start with Odell. Odell is obviously a free agent. He's obviously dealing with that in the injury that he suffered during the Super Bowl. But if you're just ranking the guys in this wide receiver group that are here right now, and, and let's throw Odell in it. Let's assume for the moment that he comes back. The best wide receiver on the Rams is Cooper Cup, right? Cooper Cup's not the best receiver on the Rams. Cooper Cup's the best wide receiver in football. And there are other good ones. Devontae Adams, Las Vegas Raider Devontae Adams, by the way, is really good. DeAndre Hopkins in Arizona is a really good player. Uh, we've got guys like Jamar Chase in Cincinnati who is fantastic. Uh, they're, they're, they're really good wide receivers. You're telling me I can have anybody I want, but Cooper Cup's got to go out? No, thanks. I'll keep Cup. So he's the best wide receiver, not only on the Rams, he's the best wide receiver in football. Who's the second best wide receiver on this team? This is where it gets a little more cloudy, right? It's probably Odell. Odell, I think, just from a skill set, Odell from uh, a versatility sort of uh, situation, Odell is probably their second best guy. 
Well, if Odell is your second best guy, now who's your third best guy? This is where it gets really cloudy. This is where it gets incredibly complicated. And this is where it probably is landing on Les Snead's desk, on Sean McVay's desk, and trying to figure out what's going on. Is it Allen Robinson or is it Robert Woods? Robert Woods has been such an unbelievable player for the Rams since they acquired him from Buffalo a few years ago. He has done nothing but be the toughest guy on the team, catch some of the biggest third down passes, score touchdowns, and just be one of those guys that everybody in the organization speaks incredibly highly of. He is an unbelievably important football player. But in this group, might he not be the fourth guy? And that's almost exactly what you started to hear. When Allen Robinson went to the Rams, according to reports out there, the Rams immediately started to get some calls about whether or not Robert Woods was available. Because here's here's the reality of it. Let's again assume that Odell Beckham Jr. comes back. And I think it's likely. It's not, it's not a slam dunk like I thought Von Miller was coming back. He's now a Buffalo Bill, so we will see. But let's assume for the sake of this conversation that Odell decides to come back. You can't have all four of these guys. You, you just can't. That Cooper Cup is going to eat first. Cooper Cup is going to get what he needs to get. And not in like an ego way. It's just he's the best guy on the team. Why wouldn't you throw it to your best player the most often? Odell Beckham Jr. is not going to want to share catches with three other guys. Okay, it's just, and by the way, who would? Allen Robinson didn't come here to be part of a wide receiver group where he is somewhere in the third or fourth range. Robert Woods, I would assume, does not want to be part of a a wide receiver group where you might be number four. Think about the Rams' fourth wide receiver on this particular team. Who was it? I mean, we never really got to see Van Jefferson in that role because Woods went down, but you're talking Ben Skoranek. You're talking about guys like this. You're, you're not Tutu Atwell, by the way. We'll talk about him coming up in just a little bit. Bye. Well, you know, or or trade or whatever it might be or something. That that was not good news for him. Well, that, that's coming up in just a little bit. But somebody's got to go. You can't have four guys. I know that injuries happen. This isn't a, a pitching staff, right? This isn't something where, hey, listen, something always happens. There's always a way to get guys innings. This is a football team, and I know Odell's not coming back till very late, but knowing that he's coming back at some point during the season, don't you kind of have to make a move? And it feels like Robert Woods is probably the odd man out in this. I would hate to see him go, but I don't know who else goes out in that group because something has to give. I just really have a hard time envisioning them playing with four guys at one position. And four high. You, your fourth guy needs to be Josh Reynolds. Your fourth guy needs to be... Van Jefferson. Your fourth guy needs to be Ben Skoranek. It needs to be somebody that you're not really that worried about feeding on a week in and week out basis. It can't be Odell. It can't be Allen Robinson. It can't be Robert Woods. They're too good of players. They're too they're they're too valuable, not just to you, but to other teams in the end. Somebody's going to give you something you need for one of those guys. And Cup's not going anywhere. They just brought Allen Robinson in. Odell is just in a vacuum, probably a better wide receiver than Robert Woods, not by a huge margin but probably is. So who leaves? Maybe it's Robert Woods. Time will tell, but I would be shocked if the Rams carry four wide receivers for a significant period of time uh, before they make a move. Now, the good news is, I I mean, good news, Robert Woods is coming back from an injury. He says he's going to be ready for the beginning of training camp. Time will tell. It would be a very quick recovery. Odell's probably ready somewhere around Thanksgiving. So there is some time to figure these things out, but I wouldn't be surprised if you see somebody move At some point, whether it's during the free agency period, the draft, whether it's something that happens during training camp, whether it's something that happens before the trade deadline, I do think you're going to see some movement in that position group because you just have too many guys along the way. Okay, so why did Allen Robinson come here other than, hey, they're the defending champions and they got a really good quarterback? That is coming up next, but not before we talk about bet online. Did you watch the tournament yesterday? Always awesome, right? Always so upsets and buzzer beaters and shockers and peacocks beating wildcats. That actually happened. It's that time of year. College basketball's tournament is here. So for all your latest odds, contests, player props, betonline.net, the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and information. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. Maybe you're not a basketball guy. It happens, right? Maybe you're a football guy, baseball guy, whatever it might be. They're your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. 
Thank you one more time for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day. Make sure you're following Locked on NFL, Locked on Experts, covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It, too, is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, so the Rams are clearly becoming a destination for players. They're clearly becoming one of those places that players who are hitting free agency, perhaps players that are are in a situation with their own teams where they are unhappy, the Rams are a place where people want to come, right? Because here here here's what's here's what drives your decision making as a professional athlete. And this is the way that you would do it. This is the way that I would do it. This is the way that 99.9% of people would do it, including the players in the NFL and other leagues. Number one, where's the money? Okay, this is my job. Think, and I know this is an unpleasant truth to think about as a fan like me, like you. But the fact of the matter is, this is their occupation. If your job said, hey, we'll pay you 25% more, guess what? You're going to go take it over there. Okay, and these guys don't have 50 years to work in their occupation. If they're lucky, they got five or six or seven. And if you are one in a million, you've got 10 or 12. Okay, they're going to follow the money. So the money has to be right. Number two, opportunity, right? Where am I going to get to play? Where am I going to get snaps? Where am I going to get targets? Where am I going to get touchdowns? Where am I going to get tackles? Where am I going to get sacks? Opportunity. Do I have an opportunity to apply my trade at the highest level? Because go back to number one. That is what's going to lead me to more money. If I got three sacks because we got something going on over here, if I can go over there and I can get 10, which going, which, which, which position gives me more money? Which opportunity presents my more money? Opportunities, right? So they're going to follow opportunity there. Number two, maybe it's a hometown thing, right? I'm from this place or that place, and I want to go play in front of my friends and family. These are the sorts of things. So there's one other part, and I think this is where the Rams have jumped right near the top of the list. This was something that the Patriots had on lock for a very long time. This is something that the Kansas City Chiefs have done a very good job with the last few years. This is something that the Seattle Seahawks had had, had going on for a while. Now where can I go and kind of try to cherry pick my opportunity to win something? Where can I go where I know the organization functions, where I know the organization is going to put me in a position to be as successful as possible. And that's what the Rams have created. It's not just that they won a bunch of games. It's not just that they won three division titles in the last five years and they're Super Bowl, the defending Super Bowl champions, or they went to the Super Bowl four years ago. These are all true. And that's very important. That's that's winning. But it's the idea of if I go there, they're going to give me a fair shot. Everybody that leaves, Von Miller's comments about leaving Los Angeles to go to Buffalo, I thought were fascinating because he was talking about how difficult it was to leave, about how well the Rams had treated him, about the way that the organization functions, about the way that Aaron Donald sets the tone, about Sean McVay, about all of these things. This is not just, hey, we won a bunch of games. This is this place works. It functions. It, it, it appears to be something that's going to function for a long time. It appears to be something that is sustainable. That is incredibly appealing that if you're Allen Robinson, for instance, and you're looking around and you have an opportunity to pick where you want to go, sure, I want money. Sure, I want touchdowns. Sure, I want to go play in a brand new stadium and all these things, but this place works. For instance, let's flip it on its head. Do the Chargers work? No. Chargers play in the same stadium, in the same city. Chargers have, you know, presumably in a salary cap environment, you've got the same amount of money available. Theoretically, I know that it kind of fluctuates. But if you could go to a place like the Chargers where the coach is new, inexperienced, and in his first year that inexperience was glaring and probably kept them out of the playoffs, you have ownership that appears to be anything other than committed to winning historically. Now, they've spent some money this offseason. They've made some moves. Time will tell. But just to use that as an example, there's one organization that's kind of scattershot and all over the place. They're firing coaches. They're hiring coaches. They don't seem to have any sort of cohesive plan historically. Or you've got the Rams who over the last five years are about as steady of an organization as there is in the entire league. Which of those two places are you going to pick? And that's where the Rams have put themselves. When you hear a player like Von Miller was in Denver his entire career, had a great deal of success there, was a Super Bowl MVP there. And when he came to the Rams after a few weeks, he's like, this place is different. This place just works differently than other places. And he was incredibly torn about leaving Because he knows that not every place is like that. Now, the money in Buffalo is very good. The team in Buffalo is very good. They do seem to be on a path that's similar to where the Rams are. The difference is the AFC is just a a fist fight every single night. 
So he decided he wanted to go there, and, and that makes sense. But hearing what he said about the Rams on the way out, I think is a lot of the reason why players like Allen Robinson and other players potentially this season, next season, five years from now, whatever it might be, will decide to come to L.A. because it functions and it works. When you see somebody sign in Jack, when Christian Kirk goes to Jacksonville, okay, do you think he thinks it functions? Do you think he's looking around saying, this place, man, they got this figured out. They're going to work. It's No, it's a money play. Hey, you're going to give me a bunch of money. Cool, I'll go do that. I'll take your money for a few years. Maybe we'll be good. You're going to go to Carolina. Maybe, maybe we'll be good. Maybe there's opportunity there. Okay, I get it. Those are number one and number two on the list. I understand the desire. But when all of the other things are the same, why not? Why not go to the place that functions better than the other places? And that right now is the Los Angeles Rams. Okay, there is some bad news in all of this. And there's some bad news for some of these players that are on the Rams roster that are either going to have to accept a very different role or they're going to have to go somewhere else to do it. That's coming up next. Don't go anywhere unless you want to hear about Bilt Bars. Bilt Bars, right? I, look, I'm not going to lie. I made a terrible decision in my food last night. It was a bad decision made in the heat of the moment because I didn't have my Bilt Bars handy. I forgot to put some more into my car, so I had to make a terrible decision on the fly. This is why you put Bilt Bars in your car, in your backpack, on your desk, wherever it is you snack, because it's a healthy, a healthy choice that just tastes great, right? All Bilt Bars covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, that's everyone included. The Puffs, which are just fantastic. You got to try those. Here's what you do. Go look at the back of a, go look at the label on a candy bar and you're going to see what's in there. 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, dozens of net carbs, all the stuff that makes you feel like you know what. Built Bar, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. You're going to feel great. You're going to feel good, and you're, between your ears, you're going to feel good because you made a good choice. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, all the flavors are amazing. you got to go try them a lot. Here's how you do it. Built.com, B-U-I-L-T.com, Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com and start making some better choices. Okay, so Allen Robinson is the newest member of the Los Angeles Rams. There is still a very good chance that Odell Beckham will be re-signed by the Rams. There's a chance he could leave too, but even if he does, Robert Woods in that scenario probably stays in L.A. And you'd have a group of Cooper Cup, Woods or Beckham, and Allen Robinson. That is a very dynamic three-headed monster. There, I, I don't know if there's a better group of three in the entire NFL. I'd be very hard-pressed to come up with anybody, honestly, that's even close. That is a lights-out group of wide receivers. Plus you got a quarterback that can make it happen. Cooper cup is going to draw doubles constantly. Guys are going to have opportunities. Tyler Higby has got to be licking his chops, right? If he's ultimately the guy that's back at tight end, he could have a monster season. He's somebody look, if I got to cover Robinson Beckham and cup guys are going to be open, right? Higby's going to be open. Whether it's cam Akers coming out of the backfield, Dale Henderson, whoever it is, guys are going to be open. The Rams offensively should be very, very good. But there are some guys that are probably looking at this saying, yeah, this is not going to work out super great for me. Two names, of course, kind of go right to the top of the list. What does this mean for Van Jefferson? Nothing good, right? Van Jefferson was on a trajectory that was pretty impressive, right? Van Jefferson was a guy that was a relatively high draft pick of the team, played a little bit, played pretty well. And then last season, you really started to see him get added to the offense in certain parts. And then certainly once Robert Woods went down and he was out there as the number three guy on a regular basis, he was an important part of what they did, but there's just not going to be enough opportunities for him. I, I, I get it. I understand there's injuries and things that can happen. Hopefully they don't, but they always do. And maybe there's something there, but this went from somebody who felt like he was on the cusp of getting in on a very good team, catching very uh, important passes in very big games to a guy that at best, at best is going to be fourth on the depth chart. That ball's going to go to cup. It's going to go to Robinson. It's going to go to Higby. It's going to go to Henderson slash Akers. It's going to go to whoever the third wide receiver is, Odell Beckham Jr. slash Robert Woods, right? How in the world are they going to find ways to get Van Jefferson the ball? Look, Sean McVay's an incredibly creative guy. If anybody can figure it out, maybe it's him. I just can't see it. And that's Van Jefferson, which brings me to the next guy. The Rams' number one pick last year. Not a first-round pick, but their first pick in the second round, 2-2 Atwell out of Louisville. Tutu Atwell had a rookie season that to say that it was forgettable would be generous. He, it, look, I don't mean to be negative. I, I really don't. But the second I saw him at training camp, I'm like, wait a second. You know who you reminded me of? Tavon Austin. And it's like, no, 
Tavon, I, I know he's still around. I know that there's a place, returns and things. What I, fact of the matter is he's so small and he's so frail that every single time in the preseason, every single time during the early part of the season when he was around, when he get hit, you'd hold your breath. You just didn't feel like he was an NFL player. And he's just not big enough. He's just not sturdy enough along the way. And it kind of bore itself out because he got hurt early in the year and he he virtually had no impact on the team. I don't think he caught a pass. He had a couple of returns, pretty pretty mid, right? It was just one of these things. There's always that rumor that he wasn't Sean McVay's favorite choice to begin with. So now all of a sudden, number one, Cooper Cup, number two, Allen Robinson, number three is some sort of hybrid of OBJ and Robert Woods, number four is Van Jefferson. You were just the second round pick of the defending Super Bowl champions. And you might not be on the field. You might not have a, a place on the roster, quite frankly, because the only thing he can do, maybe he could be a return guy, maybe. Brandon Powell's a lot better as a return guy than Tutu Atwell. I know that they have a lot more capital invested in Atwell than they do in Powell. The fact of the matter is the Rams don't seem to care too much about that. The Rams care a lot more about your production on the field than they do what they might have drafted you or how much money you might. They, they make really football related decisions far more often than some other other teams are like, no, we're going to make this work. We picked him in the second round. He's got to be a part of it. We can't make sure we got to make sure that that pick sticks. Rams don't operate like that. Do, do you help us? Not really. Okay. Let's get a different guy. That's kind of where two, two out is. So as exciting as it is for Rams fans like me, like you, if you're listening to locked on Rams, by the way, click the subscribe button. Not such good news. If you're two, two out I wouldn't be surprised if Somebody takes him off their hands. If you make a trade, if you something somewhere, I just really have a hard time envisioning where he fits in because you can't really use him as a receiver. There's just no place to put him. You're not really going to use him as a return guy. He didn't show a whole bunch of that in his games and his opportunities last year. So what do you do with him moving forward? I don't know. I just don't know. Okay. Coming up. Next week on Locked on Rams, I'm going to have a conversation with Andrew Whitworth on my radio show, Travis and Sliwa. That's coming up on Friday, March 18th. So I'm going to have some of that for you coming up on Monday about what his plans are, about what he thinks the future of the Rams are moving forward. And one of the great L.A. Rams over the last five years, Andrew Whitworth. So we'll talk to him. Uh, we'll have some sound from that. We'll play, uh, kind of talk through everything that he brought to the team. That's coming up next week on Locked on Rams. Thanks for making us your first listen. Now make your second listen. Locked on NFL Draft, Ryan Tracy and former NFL corner Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It too is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, whose house? It's locked on Ram's house.